All right, how would you like to make a really awesome bow like this one here that doesn't cost you a nickel and it looks like a rattlesnake? All right, I'm gonna get a close up of that skin there. You see how cool that is? All right, we do that with fire. It's one of the favorite projects here at our workshop, our Huck Finn School workshop. Put the rattle on the back and just really give it the appearance of a snake. And it shoots really well. This one happens to be a little bit too long. I'd like it a little shorter. So the one that we're going to demonstrate for you today, the one we're going to make for you, we cut. We just cut the end with a saw. And this is about 40 to 42 inches, I think. Um, so let's get right to it because this is, this is really a lot of fun. This is a palm frond. Um, unfortunately, they're not, they don't grow in every part of the country, the palm trees. We're going to have them on our website, blanks like this. You can, you can buy them. But watch it anyway because it's, it's a fun thing to learn. And um, like I said, we're going to have them available. So the first thing you want to, want, to, want to do is sort of clean up these edges. This is going to be the head of the snake. Okay. This will be the tail of the snake. And I want to check and just see what the tiller looks like. And the tiller is just basically the way that it bends. And this is actually really good. I don't really need to do too much with this bow. If it didn't bend up here and it bent a lot down here, I'd have to take more material off here or vice versa, just so that it would bend evenly throughout. But this is pretty good. So first thing we're going to do, Michael's going to take this little hand plane. Right, you can buy these at a hardware store. They're really inexpensive. And it's not a chopping tool. You just want to take fine pieces off with it. I'll show you what it looks like when you do it properly. You see this little, that's all you want off of there. All right, if you've got the blade adjusted too far out, it cuts like a knife. It's not good for the tool, and, it, and it's not working effectively. Right, that's how you want it to go. And we're just going to clean up these edges. All right, I'm going to let Michael do that. And then what he's going to do is he's going to take his pocket knife. After he cleans up the edge, he's going to take his pocket knife, and I'm going to go ahead and draw. So this is the tongue. You see the tongue here on the snake holds the string. We're going to draw that out. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and draw a snake head, just like that. All right, rough snake head. And Michael's going to use his pocket knife to carve this out here. And we're going to take all this material out with his pocket knife, being very careful. And then when we get to the tail end, you notice on the tail end here, he's also got a post here that holds this string. So we're going to draw that out. All right. And then he's going to go ahead and do the same thing, use his pocket knife to carve out this material in here. All right, so we're going to clean up the edges and then carve this out, and then we'll show you the progress. Right, so Michael's just carefully finishing up this uh, section around the head up here, keeping his fingers behind the blade. Okay, stop for a second, bud. So the other thing I want to show you is you can also get these, uh, just get a wood file at a hardware store as well. You want to grab one of the foreign one? Grab the four-in-one rasps over there, buddy, and that, all right, and I'll show them that one too, but I'll use this one for now. So we're just going to show you, if you don't want to use a pocket knife, you can just use a rasp. Remember, rasps and files work in one direction. All right, so this is a four-in-one. It's got four different cutting sides. You've got a rounded, rough, a rounded, smooth, flat, rough, and flat, smooth. Again, you can buy these in any hardware store. We're also going to have these on our website at some point. So you can just go ahead and shape that out, right, using the rough side. You see, it makes pretty quick work of it. Again, it sounds like I'm using it like a saw. I'm just putting pressure on the forward motion. It only cuts this way. If you pull back on it, you ruin your body. It flattens the teeth out. All right, and then you can use your, your smooth side to clean up all those hairs and then some sandpaper. I also want to show you this, um, so you'll notice where the string is and the tongue, we've carved this in an angle in the direction of the string. Okay, and that's just real simple knife work. Alright, just take your knife and just make that angle so that that string will follow that line. You could also, again, use your file just cut that angle in that way. Right, but Michael did a great job with this. Um, why don't you grab some sandpaper, buddy, while I show them this next step. All right, go ahead and grab some sandpaper over there. So for the tail, I'll go ahead and mark the rattle. You see we've done the post here with that same angle. We're just going to put little marks here where we want our rattle. 
using a sharpie it just gives you an idea make sure you are staying even you don't stray two, two options get a rounded file like this that's this real simple method just pushing only pushing only all right and then of course the other method and Michael likes to do this is just to take your knife and just cut little knocks in there all right and we're going to do that on all these sides and then he's going to sand the whole thing really smooth and then we'll burn it to get that snake pattern out of this material. So I want you to go ahead and finish these up, buddy. All right. So Michael's finishing up sanding here at our at our school, at our program here, and in our summer camps. We're sticklers about finishing, about sanding. Kids get tired pretty quick, but you know what? Too bad. Take your time, sand it right, because this is a finished product. Take some pride in the work, right, buddy? If you get tired, take a break, come back to it, but don't cheat it. All right, let's show them what you got here. You did a good job. All right, I want blisters on their hands. I want them, I want them sore. I want them strong. All right, that's pretty good. That string knot looks like we need a little bit deeper groove here for, for that follow through of the string. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that out. I don't want you to rush things here. All right. Just want to make sure that string does a good job. It doesn't slide off of there. Right, there you go. That's a pretty good one right there. All right. So another thing I want to show you is I have this larger hand plane. You can get these for under 20 bucks, 15, 20 bucks. Just makes a little bit quicker work of it. It's a little heavier, but again, it's the same. You see that little little shavings. You don't want large shavings off of that. Just real little. It's a fine woodworking tool. It's not for rough work. I mean, they do make them for rough work, but this particular one is not it's more medium kind of work. So you, you just want to take off as, as much material as you need to to get the bow to bend properly and to be smooth in the hand. All right, Michael did a really good job with the smaller one and with the sandpaper. So I think we're set. You're going to see, I'm going to check the tiller. I'm going to bend it. And as long as it's bending through the middle here, and it's even on both sides. I know that the material's been taken off correctly. Again, the rounded side is the belly. That's the side that you hold. The snake is the top of the bow. The tail, uh, the head is the top of the bow. The tail is the bottom. Now, for us to get this uh, pattern, the snake pattern, we're going to use fire. So when the kids are doing this, we obviously ask them to wear glasses in case the bottle falls over. Um, you're not familiar with a propane tank or torch and you're not used to using one, get an adult to help you. So I'm gonna go ahead and start on the head here and I'm just gonna, it's you know, we're like it's like painting. You can see that. I'm just I'm painting the snake, using the fire to kind of define it the way I want it to look. Alright? I like those cool little patterns that it already has in the palm from material. Sometimes I'll do the tongue like black, but I think I'm just going to leave it. Just by holding it in one spot. A couple of seconds, moving it back and forth, watching the material, make sure I'm not in one spot more than another. Look at that. Get that, get that edge. There you go. This is the fun part. That's why you want to sand it right. The more you prep it, the better you prep it, the better it's going to look. And that's, that's pretty awesome. Kind of, all right, so let me flip this over. You got a good look at that. And Michael, why don't you buff this while I show them the string. So the string, keep in mind, bottom stays permanent. That's just a little, I'll show you. I'll take the string off for you. Notice, I started to do it incorrect. You never want to come up over the top. All right, you never want to take the string up over the top of the post because there's too much tension. And if I let it go, it could come up and hit me in the eye. Other thing, other main reason is that you could snap your bow. So you just take some take some tension off, and then slide it down over the head and just let it fall. To take it off, you just slip it off the back. This is just a basic slip knot here. Okay. You just tie a little loop. Take another loop through, slip it on your post, 
pull it tight, that remains on here. This is a larger loop, okay? And we'll just keep it there. You'll also notice another knot down here. That knot is an adjustment knot. When I first made this string up, it wasn't short enough, so I just tied a little knot in it. You could tie a series of knots to get it as short as you need it. Generally speaking, it's about three inches to your post. That should give you about right. And then, again, to put it on, we're just going to press it down, slide it up. And because we made that nice angle here, that's just going to sit on there real tight. We'll hold it here. And these are the arrows. It's a 5 16 inch birch dowel. We've burned this as well and used turkey feathers. I'll have this in another video, show you how to do the arrows. And the way these shoot, you should have your cock feather, which always faces out the odd one, and then the flat feathers will face down.